Hello, welcome to this video where I'd be explaining to you uh, the basics of ARP spoofing or ARP cache poisoning attacks. And we have to start with the basics of what is an ARP and how it works. So basically I have uh, pulled, uh, I need to pull up a diagram here to, to make you understand how a network looks like a basic one. So this one uh, consists of three computers, as you can see, a router and a switch. So what happens when computer A wants to maybe talk to computer C, uh, the switch doesn't know where C computer, the computer C is uh, located. So what happens, the request gets broadcasted to the network, to all the computers on the network. And every computer except computer C drops the packet and computer C replies back to computer A. So then what happens, the switch remembers the port where the uh, computers are physically connected and what are their MAC addresses and the switch saves it onto a table called a MAC address table. So let me show you an example of what I just spoke about practically. So this in my right side is uh, the, uh, the configuration panel for this switch and as you can see all the four devices that are connected, three computers and the router, have been recorded in this MAC address table and along with their ports, their respective physical ports with their MAC addresses are binded to each other. So the switch remembers where to forward packets from the next time when someone requests something from some other computer on the network. So this is what data link layer does. This is what happens in the data link layer but when we add the network layer uh, where uh, the concept of IP addresses come in, we have the process of address resolution protocol or ARP. You see within a LAN IP doesn't make any sense. So within the LAN everything is done with a MAC address. So what ARP really does is it converts IP addresses to MAC addresses. So what happens is maybe when one computer has the IP address of another computer and it doesn't know the MAC address of the destination computer, uh, it asks the network again in a broadcast that uh, where is this IP? Maybe where is IP 1.2.3.4? And the computer having the IP 1.2.3.4 responds to the uh, source computer that I am at MAC address maybe ABCD. So then when the MAC address is established, uh, both the computers know where to send data, where to ask and where to communicate with. So let me say, uh, show you uh, an example of a packet capture for an ARP. So as here you can see that someone has asked that where is the IP address 10.0.0.2 and they needed to tell it to the router which is in this case 10.0.0.1 so when the question has been asked the computer who has the IP 10.0.0.2 replies that I am at C4 uh, colon 0, 02, 32, 6, B, 00 and 00 so now when the uh, MAC addresses have been established each of the computer knows that where and when to send the data to so what happens when we poison this? So uh, in the ARP cache poisoning attack, what we do is we say, we convince the router that I, in this case, in the, I'm the hacker, that I am the client the router wants to talk to. And we convince the client, or in this case, the victim, that I am the router that you need to talk to. So what happens, I am doing, in this case, a man in the middle so what happened what is happening is I'm convincing both of the router and the client uh, in a technical term which is the server and the client that they need to pass the, their data through me so what should I do then in this case I'm in my Kali virtual machine and I'm going to uh, poison my ARP so let me show you how we can pull up every IP addresses and every MAC addresses uh, with the help of address resolution protocol so I will just type here uh, net discover and you can see the this computer is reading the MAC addresses and ARP requests and then interpreting that we have three in, uh, terminals here which is first one is the router the second one is in this case my host machine let me check IP config and here you can see um, here uh, 192.168.1.2 uh, is the, my Windows machine's IP address. 
192.168.1.101 is the IP address of another virtual machine where I'm running a basic Apache server uh, with a login page, uh, which I'm going to exploit later. So what happens is that in data link layer or in the ARP scenario, every ARP request is trusted. So this is what we are going to exploit now. So I just got all of the IP addresses that I want. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to check this computer's IP address and MAC address so I can show you that how the uh, ARP is being poisoned. So ifconfig is a comment for that. You can see my IP address in this Kali box is 1.5 and my MAC address is this one which ends with 37 and 5F. So let me do the uh, ARP poisoning. I'm going to do it both ways which means I'm going to convince the router that I'm the victim and I'm going to convince the victim that I am the router. So we are going to use ARP spoof to do that. So ARP, oh, what happens? Yeah, ARP spoof minus uh, dash I, which means I for interface. And in this case, it is ETH0. So ETH0 and minus T is for target. So ARP spoof minus I, ETH0 minus T. Now I'm going to type in my, type in the IP of my victim machine in this case which is the windows one so 192.168.1.2 and i'm going to pose as the router so it's going to 192.168.1.1 and as you can see we have an arp reply we are convincing the router every second we are convincing the network in this case every second that 192.168.1.1 which is the router is at this MAC address, which in this case is our MAC address, so the router's MAC address is omitted here because we are continuously sending packets to the network that I am the router. So I just poisoned my victim machine, I just convinced my victim machine that I am the router, and now we are going to convince the router that we are the victim machine. So uh, we are going to do the same thing here ARP spoof minus I, which is ETH0 minus target. Now the router one, 192.168.1.1. And I'm going to uh, pose as the victim 1.2. Uh, yes. And now you can again see that 192.168.1.2 is at the same MAC address. So the ARP is now poisoned. Let's start Wireshark now. I'm going to just open a new tab real quick here. Yeah. Wireshark. I'll just show you the ARP requests that both the router and the victim's IP is on the same MAC address and the network doesn't care. That is the security hole we're talking about. So I'm just going to filter here up. And as you can see, VMware, this is the victim machine, which is, uh, this is the Kali machine. So who has 192.168.1.5? I'm going to tell to 192.168.1.1. And the reply comes back at, this is my MAC address. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what is going on here. I'm every time convincing by each of this request, each of this request at once in 1.2, once in 1.1, once for 1.2, once for 1.1, each time I'm convincing each of the router and the victim that I, in this case, am the one they should talk to. So the ARP spoof has been done. Now let's do something. Um, we have a web server running, as I said, and it's on the 101 IP. So, and this website is insecure, as you can see the padlock sign is crossed so what I'm going to do is I'm going for the username maybe admin and the password I'm going to keep it secret um, okay and I'm going to hit login I'm of course not going to be logged in because it's a trial password so as the ARP poisoning is happening what I'm going to do what happened actually is this username and password I just gave, this TCP request just passed through me. So I should see the packet somewhere in there. And so let me type in the filter IP dot address equals equals 192.168.102. And I only want TCP packets. So here you can see we have a lot of requests here and as I, as I told you that 101 is the uh, machine that uh, Windows this machine has connected to and we have a request, a TCP request for this IP. So let me follow the TCP stream. So uh, let, let us see if we can file in, find anything. 
and yeah we just got it this is the request this is the post request as you can see here post for the page index.php this is the post request and within the post request the variables are uname and psw in this case we i just gave the uh, username as admin and the password was lol01234 so this is how we just intercepted a packet between two different machines by poisoning the arp cache and now we have successfully hacked the username and password this can be used on any website which is not currently running on a secure socket layer or uh, transport layer security uh, there is a hack for ssl and which we we are not going to discuss it now stay tuned on the isoeh website and we may just do it later so this is how it ends this is the basic example of an arp spoof attack so hope to see you soon goodbye